Well, good evening, everyone. This is Supreme Decisions, and welcome to another episode of the Supreme Decisions Legal Minute Podcast. And I'm your host, Supreme Decisions. Well, today, I'm actually, or oh, actually it's night, technically, going into the day. But I'm going to get into something today. I hope you guys find it as interesting as I did, especially putting it together, because I didn't realize the level of passion I actually had for this particular subject. And maybe it's not necessarily the level of passion, but my perception as how this is going on. But as you know, we're in a new place. We got to pay some bills. And here we go. That burger spot number three. They're taking their last orders 30 minutes before closing, and they're located at 742A South Lake Parkway, Jonesboro, Georgia, 30236, and your stomach will thank you. Side note, just want you to know, whatever you get from there, it is absolutely phenomenal. I've eaten there every time I go to Atlanta. So yeah, stop into that burger spot number three. They were featured as the number one burger in Atlanta. So that burger spot number three is 7420A South Lake Parkway in Jonesboro, Georgia, 30236, and yes, your stomach will thank you. Urban Giro's Mediterranean Street Food. El Paso's new favorite, Big Ass Taco. We have your gyros, we have your bowls, and we have your loaded fries. Made fresh daily and made to order. Hashtag celebrate flavor. It's 1550 North Zero Goza Drive, Suite 202, El Paso, Texas, 79936. Don't forget to stop by, and they will be ready and made to order. Lastly, but definitely not least, is Jacob's Well Church in South Carolina, as soon as I find it. They are serving every third Sunday Their Sunshine Community Outreach Dinner at 2 p.m. at 241 Bradford Drive, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28208. Jacobs Well Unity Church of Christ Sunshine Community Outreach Dinner every third Sunday at 2 p.m. at 241 Bradford Drive, Charlotte, North Carolina, 28208. And this is actually one of the things I told you guys I like because they are doing a community outreach that is literally going out to the community. Be sure if you're in Charlotte, you either stop in to help out or you stop in and get you something to eat. So, now on to the business. Well, I actually was um, looking at something that was on my timeline because you guys know I do... Um, TikTok as well, with not the dances and all the other stuff, but I have the one minute legal activists on um, TikTok, and it's also under Supreme Decisions. Well, one of the things I ran across this morning was Officer Kelvin Dingle. He was on TikTok, and he had a video in three days, had over a million views, and one of the things that was brought up was <laughs> I hate to say this, but he actually used my favorite um, phrase. All cops are not bad. And he spoke about him being tired. And people are pretty much, they're not waving at him. They're not friendly towards him. So when he's driving home, he happened to notice that people were frowning at him and flipping flipping him off. And it was like, he's been doing this for 20 years, but it's almost like, He didn't exactly understand or know where this was coming from. But then if you watch his video, it actually goes into context of he saw a shift coming. Even when he did an interview, I can't remember the news station, but he even made mention of the last two years. And then they gave him a couple of scenarios and they kind of buttered him up. But here's the the thing that I thought was interesting, was the fact that he said, you shouldn't wait for your turn to talk. 
but you should have a conversation and actually listen. Now, the thing that I, you know, with me, you probably heard me say it a hundred times or at least 50 plus if you're listening to the podcast. What's the reason behind it? Because again, there has to be context to it. Now, I'm going to go through three pages of context <laughs> for the most part because I want to read some stuff to you. I'm actually going to go to through some stuff with you. But I want to speak indirectly to Kelvin Dingle because, again, the conversation needs to be had. And there was a question on his mind. And I'm going to make mention to a lot, again, I, I went through a lot today because, like I said, I, I, I literally went back about four pages and really, literally, I, I hand wrote three and typed up one, and I have a couple web pages open. So this is all from a one-minute video. <laughs> I just want you to understand that. So let's go ahead and go into it. Because the thing I want to understand, because, you know, whenever I pose these to you, I ask you a question. So Kevin Dingle, or Officer Kelvin Dingle, what created the environment for going to work and not coming home. Because that was one of the things that he made mention of. That he gets up every day. And he may not be coming home when he kisses his wife in the morning to leave work. And the reason why I ask that is because the context of it. Because... I'm on the other side of this. I'm not a police officer. I have police officer relatives. I have police officer friends. But I'm on the other side of this. I'm the guy that they are sworn to protect and defend. But I've also been the guy that's been on the passenger side of a car. That's been thrown to the ground with a gun to the back of my head and the knee of my back. The place where Officer... Kelvin Dingle actually is a operations manager or, or major or whatever he is in his position at Morehouse Medical Center. I've been, I've been on the both sides of that. I've been, I've been there. So when I asked that question, what created that environment? The reason why that environment is there, this is not an answer, but this is this is a observation of such, and I'm only just touching on it right now because, like I said, I'm going to go deeper into it. This is a police issue. This is a policing issue. So just like whenever you say not all cops are bad, I'm going to give you an illustration of why we begin to look at the good cops or those that those that believe themselves to be good cops. Why we're birds of a feather flock together. And the next part of that is a, a question he asks. Is wanting people to judge him on his performance and not the perception earned. And yes, I understand words have power, and I did use the word earned. The perception that most people have of police officers is a earned behavior. Because most of the stuff that we deal with on a day-in, day-out basis, this isn't new. This conversation has been going on since what? The 40s, the 50s, the 60s, 70s, the 80s, the 90s. We actually watching beatings in stereo now thanks to the new iPhone with Dolby. And I'm even going to give you a little bit more context. Because whenever I make mention of this, because that question is going to come up again, what created the environment for going to work and not being able to come home? What made that mindset, what created it for him? Or why is it in your mind that it's a possibility? But again, I'm going to go back. 
because I'm pretty sure everybody remembers the actual conversation that I had um, a couple weeks um, ago where I spoke about, I had, I spoke with the young man and he talked about the punishment for what he was trained to do. Well, Officer Kelvin Dingle was pretty much in the mix of all of that. Because I'm pretty sure most of you guys don't even remember the incident that actually led up or sparked the blue flu in Atlanta. Because again, what I'm getting ready to talk about is his two-year context. What happened? What happened since 2019? What has happened for public perception to change from waving and being happy that a police officer is around to now they're frowning and flipping him off just because the uniform he wears? Because not all cops are bad. Do y'all remember that event? I just want to know if you remember. If you remember, write down in the comment section. If you're not in Atlanta, tell me where you're at. Leave that stuff down there because I want to know. Because I want to understand if... If you see a change or shift in your area, what is it that you see? Because Kelvin Dingle does not see what you see. Other than 2019, there was a shift. But he asked a question. I have an answer. It's an elongated answer. Because... This is one of those where I'm not only giving you context, I'm laying a foundation, not for a, not for just a a loaded question. I'm giving you an answer that provokes thought. It allows you to open your eyes and see what it is that the other side sees. Because one of the things that I learned in my life is in order for me to make a, an informed decision, I need all the information. Or in police terms, I need the totality of circumstances. I need to know all sides of this thing. So I need more information. Now I'm going to give you an abundance of it. Because this is part of the conversation that you want to have. But see, this is one, also one of the things where I did a lot of writing. I did a lot of it. So it's kind of going to spill out on you a little bit. But this is where I paint the picture for you. Because I want you to sit down. If you're watching this or if you're listening to this, at some point, I want you somewhere safe. If you're in your car, enjoy the ride. If you're at home, find you a comfy chair. Because today, Supreme is going to get different. It's going to be different because I got to give you something else because I want you to sit down. I want you to put your headphones on. I want you to relax. I want you to close out the world. I want you to see if I can paint a picture for you. Can you do that? I I hope you can do that. I hope you're able to do that. Sit down. Get you something to drink. Listen to the sounds of my voice and see if now you get a picture of what it is that I'm painting. Because when we talk about the incident that sparked the blue flu in Atlanta in 2020, May 30th of 2020 to be exact, there were protests because of the George Floyd shit murder as we know it now and there were these two Morehouse yeah student from where Officer Kelvin Dingo was at and Spellman students were in a car well most of you that are not familiar with Atlanta if you're downtown in that area near the um, AU Center was the Atlanta University Center at the AU Center There's not a lot of two-way roads. And then the roads that are two-way, they're kind of congested. So what was happening, a 
Atlanta was shutting roads down because they were trying to control the flow of traffic and people that was going in and out of where the rioting was taking place. What happened was these two students got caught in the midst of that, and they were sitting pretty much in stopped traffic. Six Atlanta police officers forcefully... You know what? Let me back up. Let me back up because Kelvin Dingle stated most of them go to work to do their job. Kelvin Dingle mentioned not all are bad. Some officers make bad decisions. But I'm I'm, I'm going to give you the rest of his quote. But it is what it is. Now I'm going to go into it because this is the incident that sparked that. And this is also May 30th, 2020. This is last year, not two years ago. Last year. Six officers forcefully pulled these two students out. One from Spelman, one from Morehouse, which meant one was a female. Out of their car after smashing their windows and tasing them multiple times in the course of their arrest. Now, you want to know what these violent criminals were doing or at least what they were accused of what these heinous children did to force these good police officers that are trained to be professional six of them You want to know what these children did to get these six officers out of character and to move beyond their training? Messiah Young and Tania Pilgrim were repeatedly tased because while stuck in traffic, because they were just sitting there and Atlanta was closing roads, they were using the police officers to do so. Young began began recording a police encounter with another man. Officers were involved in another police stop in Atlanta. He decided, hey, I'm going to help out this young man by at least showing them somebody's got this on video. That's it. That's what provoked Messiah Young having his arm broke, having Miss Pilgrim's car windows bashed out, having them being tased not once, not twice, but three times because they were recording the police interacting with another gentleman. That's it. which they have every right to do under this little stupid Supreme Court case, Field versus the city of Philadelphia, which was a 2017 case, which was what, five years ago? Four years ago? Which happened to go right behind this other little stupid case, Turner v. Driver. And I can spit off a litany of other Supreme Court cases that allow for them to film the police officers while performing their duties as long as they're not obstructing their field. Kelvin Dingle wants to understand why there was a shift in the last two years. He wants to understand why people are looking at him and frowning because he's wearing that uniform. He wants to understand why people are not saluting him anymore while he's wearing that uniform. He wants to understand why people are flipping him off just because he's wearing that uniform. But then I tell you, these children were assaulted for doing what they are allowed to do by law. They were literally beaten by those that call themselves law enforcement. They're wearing the exact same uniform Kelvin Dingle's wearing. 
but Kelvin Dingle's wondering why. But also, I'm going to quote Kevin Dingle, but it is what it is. Some officers make bad decisions. In this case, it was six officers that made bad decisions. Two to instigate it and four others to be followers. But it is what it is. Because not all of them are bad. But here's my question. And this again is the, directly to Kelvin Dingle. Where were these six officers training when they did that? Where was these six officers' professionalism when they did that? Because you remember, again, the conversation. The reason why we did the blue flu. The reason why I didn't go to work. Because these cops made some bad decisions, but it is what it is. Is because we were being punished for doing what we were trained to do. But I'm supposed to be happy about the results, even though you're telling me what it should be. I'm actually going to go off on a little tangent because there's a conversation I constantly have with a friend of mine. And I tell him, I say, I love y'all innocent people because y'all live in the world of what should happen. Well, they should do this. They should do that. That's not, I've never lived in the should world. Never. I live in reality. Because I know what is happening. I know what the chances are some, <laughs> some BS is going to happen. Because just like in Atlanta, I knew no matter if I was behind the wheel or if I was in a car, whether if it was me and a guy or me and a girl, I was going to the ground. I was going to be on my face on I-20. I was going to have a gun to the back of my head. Why? Because it is what it is. Some officers make bad decisions. According to Kelvin Dingle. But not all of them are bad. I also understood that if he looked like me and his partner didn't, my response was always, don't hit me in my face. I knew I was going to get a knee in the side. I knew I was going to get kicked in the chest. I knew I was going to get punched in the gut. Just don't hit me in my face. Because they have to show that they're part of the bro club. Why? Because some officers make bad decisions. But it is what it is. But you want to understand, why is it that when I kiss my wife in the morning, I don't know if I'm coming home? And here's the thing, because a lot of people don't understand. It, the, the, within this statement, within this question, because I hate to, I hate to hear certain shit, but it's, there's this thing called an oxymoron. And the funniest part about that is, while asking the question on TV, he answered the question while on TV, almost in a simultaneous breath. Not all officers are bad. Some make bad decisions. Not all officers are assholes. But some assholes get some officers shot. Not all officers that are shot are dirty officers. Not all officers that are shot at are clean. Because when officers are shot at or killed, they use the words, they were ambushed, they were executed. But when an officer shoots somebody, we know more about the victims than we do about the officer. But it is what it is. Some officers make bad decisions. 
but they're trained to be professionals. I'm going to go into Mark Gardner. He participated in the blue flu or in the causation of the blue flu because he was one of the officers that was fired for breaking this young man's arm for recording him interacting with another person. So he broke his arm for doing something lawful. Why? Because his training said to do it. Not all officers are bad. Some make bad decisions. But it is what it is. Because even when Mark Gardner was fired, he cited his training as the reasons he should still be or should be reinstated. Because he's being punished for doing what he's trained to do. Ivory Streeter was the second officer that pulled a young lady out the car. He was also fired. He also cited his training for his behavior. Because not all officers are bad. Some officers make bad decisions. But it is what it is. Now, uh, uh, the funniest shit is, is the fact that these officers had body cams. And I constantly talk about the police not turning over the body cam footage, the camera footage, because they say it's designed to protect them, and I absolutely believe that. But if it's to exonerate you for wrongdoing, why don't you put it out? Why do you have to redact it? You know, why are your good cops redacting video? Why are you good cops taking out audio? Or why are some of y'all not even cutting on your body cams at all? Or is that part of the, some officers make bad decisions, but it is what it is. Because you remember last week I asked why cannot we, why we can't correct, why we can't ask for police officers to do their job properly. Or why can't we correct police officers when they're doing something wrong. Because some officers make bad decisions and it is what it is. Because it's dismissed. Oh, he did something bad, but that ain't me. Because he wants us to judge him for, the, for his character. The problem is, the man standing beside him isn't judging the people that he's encountering where for their character. You're asking me to do something as a whole that's not as a whole being done for me. Because I'm, I'm a, and, and the saddest shit is I actually just got off of the stuff that I wrote down because it, th this resonates so deep with me. Because the whole point is Morehouse, that's my spot. That's, that's up there in the eight. Do you understand how many years I ran through the AU Center? You probably, nobody probably really understands how long I ran deep and through the AU Center. You have no idea how many times I've had police encounters, black, white, and indifferent, in the midst of the AU Center. I've had horrible treatment. I've been beaten by cops and let go. I've had cops rob me and let go. I've also had cops sit down and have a conversation with me. I've had cops sit down and just listen to this rhetoric that I spit at times. They listen to the rants. Why? Because not all cops are bad. But one thing I did notice, and I'm going to give you this. Generally, a good cop works by themselves. Because if you often hear me, I speak about my friend who's been shot on the job, who is a police officer, been a police officer for more than 20 years. He's been shot twice. 
the nicest dude I know. I was actually with him when he made a couple of stops. It, and it tripped me out because that, the funniest thing to me was he was making a stop in Atlanta. Traffic. He never put his hand on his gun. He never raised his voice, even when people got excited. And the one thing that was mind-blowing to me was his level of calm and the fact that he understood when people see a police officer, it's not a good day. You're not seeing a cop at the best of times. 99.9% of the times you see a cop, something fucked up is happening. So why should I be smiling when I see you? Why should I be calm when I see you? You're not coming at a calm moment. You're not dealing with me at a happy moment. Why should I give you the benefit of doubt when that same benefit is not being extended? Because I looked at a movie called The Hate You Give. And I loved it because it came from the remnants of Tupac. Tupac was my dude. I listened to Tupac from, hell, high school on. Hell, I still listen to Pac. But the hate you give, because most people don't even understand Thug Life was an acronym. But anyway, the hate you give was part of it. But when I watched that movie, it was difficult for me to watch. Simply because... The hate you give illustrated the one thing that resonated. Not with just me. But it resonates across this country. You had a young man who was talking to a 10-year-old and a 6-year-old telling them how to get home when dealing with police. Say that one more time. You have to tell a 10-year-old and a 6-year-old child with dark skin how to get home. I've had this conversation with my children. One of my sons was put down on his face and he was put down on his face in his own front yard. But some officers make bad decisions, but it is what it is because not all of them are bad because one of the good quote unquote officers realized who my son was and told him to go ahead and get in the house. Don't and nobody else talk to him. Here's my question. What if they didn't know that was my son? What if that wasn't my son's front yard? I've had those conversations. I've experienced every instance that happened in that movie, The Hate You Give, I've been in it. Every instance. That is, and I've only watched it once. I could never watch it again. It took me literally four days. I watched it in pieces. Because I could not just sit there because when I say it resonated with me because the one place on this planet that I love more than where I'm at is ATL but the one place I will never go back to is ATL and you know why 90% of the reason is police but Kelvin Dingle wants to understand what happened in the last two years. I'm giving you what happened to me in the last 20. Because when comedians are talking about it, it's a joke. But when I say something about it, oh, I'm anti-government. But when I question you on what it is, you don't even know it. Why? Because you're not even trained on it. But then you wonder why when you see, and he literally mentioned this, Kelvin Dingle really mentioned every morning he's seeing something negative portrayed about police every morning. That sounds like a policing problem. That sounds like a police training problem. That sounds like there's something in the policing portion that needs to change. Because even the police 
Reform Act is bullshit because it doesn't ask. It doesn't ask for these officers to be retrained. It doesn't ask for these officers. You know what? The one thing about it is I, I, I get I get part of it. I'm going to give you part of it because I'm about to get back on, on, on task. But I get part of it. Because most of these officers, they're working 16, 18 hour shifts or as they call them tours. Because I told you guys, I'm going to get more into that. Because whenever I talked about somebody at a police officer level with a grenade launcher, but a McDonald's IQ, there's a problem. Who are you using these grenade launchers on? Who the hell do you need a grenade launcher for? What is it that you are doing that requires a police officer to be operating a grenade launcher? But it is what it is. Because I, Kelvin Dingle, if you're listening, I'm helping you see where this is coming from. Because you're talking about a young man who was drugged through the mud for helping people. They offered me more time for helping people than they did for a young man that murdered three random people. I'm going to say that one more time. This young man that went out and murdered three random people in Atlanta was on trial the exact same time I was. My deal was 20 years per count, which was 108 counts. He killed. He took three random lives and served 15 years. They call me a threat. No lives taken. Only saving lives. Police ran through my The police were the ones that they didn't instigate it, they didn't initiate it, but they did participate in it. Just like Mark, he participated in it. Ivory, he participated in it. But some officers make bad decisions. But Kelvin, I guess it is what it is. People are frowning at you, but I guess it is what it is. People are flipping you off, but I guess it is what it is because some officers make bad decisions. But then we look at Cab County Public Resource Officer Willie Patterson. Used excessive force on a special needs female. Had multiple previous complaints. Where were these good officers at to stop him? Where were these good officers at to report him? Where were these good officers at to correct his behavior? Where were these good officers at to stop him from continuing this? Because again, multiple complaints. Because at what point do some officers making bad decisions have the not all officers, the not all officers are bad, where they're at? Why are they not correcting this if he's still there? Because one of the things we did when I played basketball was the fact that when somebody's fucking up, we don't let him continue doing it. We make changes. We sit down. We correct. Sometimes we get in the fist fights. And that's a shout out to my boy, Chris. I still love you even though I punched you in your face. But it is what it is. Because some officers make bad decisions. But again, not all are bad. Why is nobody correcting it? Then we go to, you know, your boy, Victor Hill, who is strapping people to chairs and leaving them for hours. But it is what it is because some officers make bad decisions. Because again, this is not something that was multiple years ago. This was last week. 
I'm going to say that. This is not years ago. This is last week. This ain't some rural area. This is Atlanta. Understand that. I'm not going way off DeKalb County. Willie Patterson. This is two weeks ago. You mentioned the change in the last two years. Doesn't know where it comes from. This is your city. These are your fellow blue liners. Sydney Dorsey. I actually did go back a little bit because Sydney Dorsey rings bells and loud in DeKalb County. Why? Because not only was he the sheriff in DeKalb County, he killed another man, another sheriff in DeKalb County, investigated the murder that he committed in DeKalb County with the help of multiple other officers in DeKalb County, and almost got away with it in DeKalb County. Scott Byam threatened to shoot a high school kid at a McDonald's while off duty. Now, you want to know what this high school kid did? This, this heinous bastard. Scott was upset with this high school kid because... It was taking too long for his order. Yeah, that's what that, that's it. That's it. There's nothing else that follows that. There's literally nothing else. Because now you have, I'm a police officer, I'm entitled to something. My uniform requires people to smile at me. My uniform is a station for people not to flip me off. People are supposed to be happy because I'm wearing this uniform. And <laughs> Sheriff Jeffrey Mann. <laughs> Sheriff Jeffrey Mann was in the Beach of Meat section of Piedmont Park at night. When he got caught, he took off running. Again, most people know where Piedmont Park is. It's down the road from Morehouse. Kelvin Dingle. One of my favorites. One of my favorites. Because this dude here was for real. Vancito Gomes. November 2020. Mr. Gomes was a police officer. Used term was. He was also a hitman for the gangster disciples. Not all cops are bad. Some make bad decisions. <laughs> but it is what it is, right? Dude was a police officer and a hitman for the gangster disciples. But it is what it is because he made a bad decision and... That doesn't. Sh that shouldn't reflect negatively on you. Even though attitude reflect leadership, we're not all bad. Is the cry from Kelvin Dingle? But you mentioned the last two years of your twenty years of service, and you don't know why, and you have a question of why it is that you don't know if you're going home when you kiss your wife. Rashard Brooks, sleeping in his car at Wendy's. Now here's the thing about, about Rashard. Rashard, it was, they, they actually looked for an excuse for these officers because for the most part, when I initially started watching this, the officers were actually kind of cordial. They were very professional. They did the thing that most people are trained to do or you're at least told to do. Somebody's high or drunk, don't let them drive. They sat there and talked to them very calmly 
for 35 minutes. And then they didn't. I'm going to say that they were calm until they weren't. And when the calmness escalated, they didn't blame Rashard. They were looking for an excuse to blame Rashard when Rashard was not the one who escalated the situation. But guess what? Rashard is not the one trained to manage the situation. Oh, there's that damn word again. Because they were doing what they are trained to do when they broke <laughs> when they broke the, the young man's arm. They were doing what they were trained to do. When they killed Rashard Brooks, they were doing what they were trained to do. Now, here's the thing that was funny to me, and you can go download them. The Atlanta Police Department Standard Operating Procedures Manual and the Georgia Police Officer's Standard for Use of Force. As much as people wanted to say the shit that I say when I'm reading off these Supreme Court cases is just asinine. I get it. Because I'm the only jackass out here still reading. I'm the only jackass out here still looking for answers. I'm not, I'm, I'm, I'm that dude. I'm still the only one out here trying to get the real answer for this. That's why I came up with that. Because to the letter, those officers were wrong. So guess what that speaks directly to? Their training. Their training is wrong. You know, the training that's not being addressed in the Police Reform Act. The training of the police officers that the Cab County in Atlanta doesn't want to do because they want to train the citizens, not the police. They don't want to correct the police. They want to correct the citizens. But Kelvin Dingle doesn't understand where that's coming from. Because not all officers are bad. Some officers make bad decisions, but it is what it is. Antonio Smith, officer broke his arm while he was complying. While he wasn't even a suspect. Whoops. That was in February. Roderick Walker. This was two days ago. Passenger in the car pulled over to which the officers never even spoke to the driver. I'm going to say that one more time. Roderick Walker was a passenger in a car that got pulled over because of a broken taillight, supposedly. Because if you look at the video, taillights aren't broken. But anyway, because we don't want to do that because that video is pesky. That, that damn video, we don't want that video. That videos mean nothing. Don't believe your eyes. Believe what we say. Even though we're constantly lying, we're getting caught in lies, don't believe your eyes. In which they had never spoke to the driver prior to pulling Roderick Walker out and punching him in his face while two officers laid on top of him. The, you ready for the flip side of this? They did all of this while his 10-year-old son watched. Kelvin Dingle doesn't understand why this happens. Now, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to give you a couple of instances because, again, like I said, I've been arrested a lot in Atlanta. I've been dealing with cops a lot in Atlanta. Now, I have a son. He's, he's older now. But when he was about six, seven years old, he was in the middle of me and a couple of police interactions. The one thing I hated was when these officers would get get kind of rambunctious. Because when they did, my son would see that. The problem is he internalizes that. He sees, this young child sees someone trying to hurt or do something malice to his father. Now him internalizing that 
transferred into 10 years later, he is literally in a fist fight with police officers, multiple officers. Why? Because he does not respect them. All because he's watched it multiple times where his dad may have been just walking around. His dad may have just been in a car. And police tried to hurt him. So now in his mind, I'm going to get them before they get me. But Kelvin Dingle wants to figure out where does this come from? Why does he have to worry about kissing his wife and not coming home? Because not all officers are bad. Some officers make bad decisions. But Kelvin, it is what it is. Solomon Muhammad, February, another one of those Februarys in Atlanta, beat and tased on video a man peacefully protesting for police reform. The very thing this man is trying to change. He was beaten and tased on video for doing it. But Kelvin Dingle is wondering what brought this on? Kelvin, I'm going to ask you. I hope you don't mind me calling you Kelvin. Mr. Dingle, Officer Dingle. Where was Solomon Muhammad's professionalism where was officer muhammad's training or was officer muhammad doing what he was trained to do sometimes when you train a dog to attack that's exactly what it does you cannot be surprised that an attack dog is attack game when I speak about police are trained to generate revenue, I'm not surprised when I see them doing things to generate revenue because I don't expect them to be very intelligent. I let that be the surprise. I don't expect them to be very knowing. I don't even expect them to be very calm because most stupid people aren't calm very often. So I let that be the surprise. And the reason why I use the word stupid is because anybody that goes out on a day-to-day -day basis that hates their job and continue doing it is a stupid person to me. And yes, that is my opinion. You're doing a job that you hate doing every day, day in, day out. <laughs> why? You think you're going to get some of this time back that you're here? No, go do something else because you're taking up somebody's spot that's actually wanting to do that job. They're wanting to be one of those, quote unquote, not bad cops. Because there's a, I'm going to get to the reason why I don't use the word good cops. I'll, I'll, I'll get into the, I, I get, not all cops are bad, but again, they're generally by themselves. Very seldom do you see a good cop with a partner. But again, every time I've seen a video with Kelvin Dingo in a car or in a police car, Kelvin Dingo is by himself. So you're going to hear me say something at the end of this, this podcast that speaks directly to the things that I've seen just in my little quick search of Kelvin Dingo. Because it actually might blow your mind at what I say at the end of this. It may. It may not. But best believe, it's going to be profound. It's going to be profound. Because again, I put thought into this. I didn't just throw a whole bunch of shit together and say, I'm just going to give it out. But, I, but as you can see, I can't even stay on topic of things that I actually wrote down because of how passionate I am about this. Because when you have that question, Can you see it? Can you see what I'm talking about? Are your eyes still closed? Because I'm not going to speak directly to the context of this. 
I'm going to speak directly to you. I want you to see what I see. I want you to feel what I feel because I want you to understand. I don't mind the conversation. I enjoy it. Because this portion of the conversation came from a six minute video, which I actually, I think it was a little less than that. And that's including the one minute TikTok video. Because again, the question was asked, what brought him to that point? His response was negative portrayal of law enforcement every day. But what he's forgetting is that if I can't videotape you doing something good and everything that's being brought to me daily is bad, guess what I see? If you're only giving me bad, that's all I see. So when you ask, where is all this coming from? It's from all the bad that's being spewed out on us. <laughs> I'm going to go off topic a little bit further. But when we hear about cases such as Breonna Taylor, Andrew Brown Jr., and just today, literally today, in Brunswick, Georgia, where Ahmaud Arbery was killed, Latoya James was killed. All of these people, Breonna Taylor, Andrew Brown Jr., Latoya James, were killed by police serving a search warrant for drugs. Say that one more time. Breonna Taylor, Andrew Brown Jr., Latoya James, just today, was killed by police serving a search warrant on their homes for drugs. They were each subs subsequently killed in this police encounter. You know what all three of them had in common, which I thought was, was the most profound thing of all this? Within a couple of hours, we knew the entire life story of the victims and nothing about the officers. I'm going to say that one more time. Within a few hours, we, threw, we knew the entire life story of the victims, but nothing about the officers. Now, this actually brings something to mind. There was this thing called a Bivens Act. Where this young man, Bivens, had police raid his house. And he sued six unanimous or anonymous or unanimous, anonymous officers. Why? Because these good police officers or some officers make bad decisions. But, you know, it is what it is. Didn't want to turn over their names. Didn't even want to turn over police reports. But they're the ones doing the right thing, right? Yes, I pause for dramatic effect because the question was real. The question is asked because it's a response to the question that was brought up. What brought this on? What changed? Breonna Taylor was in 2020. Andrew Brown Jr. was three weeks ago. Latoya James was today. So when you ask, where is this coming from? Maybe the better question is, where are the videos? And then if you give me one, why is it 20 seconds and redacted? Why can't we know about these good officers? The ones that's doing their job. The one that's performing with this professionalism. But some officers make bad decisions, I guess, and it is what it is. Because not all officers are bad. The problem is... I'm going to give you... I'm, I'm going to give you... I'm going to give... 
You know what? I'm, I'm going to just drop it on you. You ready? Uh, uh, close your eyes. Breonna Taylor, Andrew Brown Jr., Latoya James, each killed by police executing a search warrant of their homes for drugs. Each killed. No video. Ready for the last part of this? No drugs. Not all are bad. 76% don't turn over video. 76%. And then he wonders, where did all this come from? Now, I'm a, I'm a <laughs> Officer Kelvin Dingle. I'm actually going to gonna make a couple references to your TikTok videos. But I'm going to actually make reference to two. Two in particular. You have your emotional TikTok video where you're screaming, I'm tired, I'm tired, I'm tired. I get it. Because I'm tired of shit too. The video directly before that, Officer Kelvin Dingle is dancing about a business owner going to jail regarding a PPP loan. What in the hell are we dancing for? So we're dancing for the arrest of someone that's a business owner that's actually benefiting the community. We're, we're dancing for that, him, him or her being arrested. Which technically, the PPP loan is some other shit that has to do with the IRS and taxes. And that would, like, why are we celebrating that? Why are we celebrating a business closing? Why are we celebrating arresting someone that may be innocent? Oh, I got it. Because today, the one, the one thing that, that, I, that, <laughs> that caught my attention today. It was an Arkansas man. And he was convicted in, I believe it was 93. And he was maintaining his innocence. He was executed four years ago for whatever reason the I believe with the Innocence Project finally had an opportunity four years after his death. okay, excuse me, he was executed on the twentieth of April in two thousand seventeen, so it was damn near four years a little bit past the day. Liddell Lee. His dying words was, I'm an innocent man. Yeah. He was telling the truth. He was executed in jail. Because again, police officers arrest him. They make up stories and they come up with their hypothesis. They make evidence fit. He doesn't have money to have a real lawyer, so he goes with a public pretender who then does not give him a vigorous defense. Because you remember, the people, the, pro the police, the prosecutor, the defense, and then the judges. He chose to fight back, which is rare because he's in that 5%. But the prosecutor pushed the narrative because the prosecutor only wants a win. Doesn't care about evidence. The police are only doing what generates revenue and don't care about law and don't know law. That's why they use the word hypothesis and theory. Our theory of the crime. 
Then they find evidence to fit their theory or hypothesis. They hand it to the prosecutor who does not turn it over to the defense and defense does not make a request for it so it can be a vigorous defense and then the judge doesn't give a shit. Then you have a man who is not only exonerated by DNA but he's already he's also exonerated because his fingerprints didn't match. But then you wonder when you look at Liddell Lee's case why are we okay with anything other than pushing forward for police reform? That's, that's the only question I have. Why are we push forward for something other than police reform? Because here's the thing, and this is another one that's directly to Officer Kelvin Dingle. If you want people to like you because of the uniform you're wearing, you probably shouldn't celebrate someone going to jail at least until they are proven to be guilty. Because, see, you're not looking like, you're not portraying an image that offers an opportunity for me to see that good cop. Because I wouldn't celebrate anyone going to jail and then being punished prior to being convicted. Because being in jail does nothing if you're innocent. That's not law. That's not what law enforcement is. So to celebrate to dance, to even make a video dancing, oh, you want to getting arrested. That doesn't tell me that you're a good cop. Because that sounds like you're happy when you're arresting people, regardless of what the consequence is. Because I'm pretty sure the Lee family's not very happy to know that their brother, cousin, sister, brother, whatever, was executed and did nothing wrong. Or even dance into a song that says, I have two graves dug, one for myself and one for the MF that's in my way. What? That doesn't sound like a dude that's tired. That doesn't sound like a dude that's worried about coming home, especially when you're already planning the funeral. Because when you say the context that not all cops are bad, I love Chris Rock. Chris Rock, <laughs> Chris Rock, Chris Rock had, I, I guess he hit it on the, the nail on the head or however you want to say that. He said, some professions can't have a few bad apples. Now, to answer your question, Officer Kelvin Dingle, of why you have the issue of kissing your wife and then wondering if you're coming home that afternoon is because those bad apples, because it is what it is, reflect directly on those that look like you. Because just like I said, birds of a feather flock together. When you stand in solidarity of BS, when you don't correct the behavior of people that are on your team, People should have a problem with that. You should have a problem with that. You are actually in a position of power on your team. Your team should only get stronger as you get stronger. Because here's the thing. 
Because here's the thing. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to read, read a couple things. The Georgia Oath of Office. I, whoever you are, do solemnly swear or affirm that I will support and defend the constitutions of the United States of America and the state of Georgia against all enemies, both foreign and domestic. Here's the problem, because I'm going to finish that. Sometimes the enemy is wearing your uniform. Are you defending the Constitution of the United States and the state of Georgia against all enemies if you're not correcting the behavior of your brethren? Because I gave you several examples of just Atlanta in the last two years. But let me continue. That I will faithfully perform all duties of my office. That I will faithfully observe all the rules, orders, and regulations of the police department. And I will faithfully enforce the laws of the state of Georgia and the ordinance of my city. Now, I just thought, I thought I'd read that because there's this thing in the Georgia State Constitution. It's section two, page 10 for those that are actually checking up on your boy. Thank you. Section two, origin and structure of government, paragraph one. Origin and foundation of government. Let's read, shall we? All government of right originates with the people. Remember that little stupid statement I kept saying, we the people? We the people. Anyway, it's founded upon their will only. It is founded on the will of the people only. That's the Constitution that Officer Kelvin Dingle stated he's going to uphold and defend against all enemies. Now, and is instituted solely for the good of the whole. Public officers are the, I want to make, is this thing on? I want to make sure you're listening. Because this is for, uh, I'm not only just talking to Kelvin at this moment. Officer Kelvin Ding, I'm not only talking to him at this moment. I'm talking to all the police apologists that says when I say this, I am wrong. Because again, Page 10, Section 2, Origin and Structure of Government, Paragraph 1, Origin and Foundation of Government. Ready? Public officers are the trustees and servants of the people. Remember, all government of right originates with the people. They are public servants, trustees of the people and are at all times amenable to them. Yes, I said it because I read it. Now, for those that don't understand what the word amenable means, a person open and responsive to suggestion, a person that's open and responsive to suggestion, a person open and responsive to suggestion. So whenever I say they must articulate it is literally written. But again, I don't know shit. I'm making this up as I go. But they're being punished for what they're trained. But nobody's standing on what they're saying. You don't hear me. You're being punished for how you're trained, but nobody's being stand up for what they're saying and swearing to God. But I'm the problem because I can't correct that behavior. I can't ask them to do it the right way. 
and you're wondering why people are looking at you and frowning. You're wondering why people are flipping you off. You're wondering. Because <laughs> even him. Officer Kelvin Dingle spoke about it. they took an oath to protect and serve. So he understands that it's there. Because they always stop there. Because they forget they took an oath to protect and serve the public. Because if you also note it in that Constitution, it doesn't talk about protecting the police officer first. It talks about protecting the public. It doesn't say anywhere the servant. Just want you to understand that. So whenever I'm speaking this, I am speaking it because it is written. You don't have to like it. I don't have to like it. But guess what? We have to live it because it is what it is. Even if some officers make bad decisions. And we all do understand not all officers are bad, but they are few and far between. That's the problem. They are horribly trained. That's the problem. Nobody can correct them. That's the problem. So when you're under asking where, the, where, where this comes from, I don't know, because 20 years is a long damn time. But so is getting a foot in your ass from the time you're 16 to the time you're 40. That's a problem. That becomes tiresome. I got tired. My response was draw, draw a line in the sand. Now I'm going to take you to court and I'm going to sue you for everything you got just because. Just because. And guess what? Because you're not performing or trained properly, and I know this. Why? Because I know your training. I'm reading your training manuals. I'm going through your training schedules. I'm reading and I'm applying. Why? Because I know you're not. So guess what I'm not doing? I'm not losing. I'm not losing to someone with a low ass IQ. I'm not losing to someone that can't follow instructions. I'm not losing. So when we talk about these things, because here's the great part about it. I gave you guys at the beginning of this two books, not one, but two books. How many of you are going to actually listen to this again and find what those books are? Because guess what? Those books are public record. Those books are not only online, but they're in this thing called a library. If you don't want to go to the library, guess what? They're in law libraries. They're also in police departments. Nobody reads them. You know why? 99.9% .9 of the people that I've even talked to have not read the Constitution of Georgia. And they've lived there most of their life, if not all of it. Guess what I've done? Because, see, most people don't understand that the policing practice is part of the policing problem. Say that one more time. The policing practice is part of the policing problem because police actions are what drove the public to need dash cameras in their vehicles. Why? To protect them from the police. Why? Because 76% 70, of all video from police encounters don't come from police. They don't make it to court. You request the videos. I actually, I'm going to give you a tee hee. Give you a quick, quick story. There was this young man. He was a paralegal. He's actually in, I believe, California. And I was helping him with the case because he said, I had never, I had never really gone in depth. And he was worked, at, worked as a paralegal on the defense team. So I started giving him information, and he was like, I've never seen it this in depth. I've never seen these questions asked. I've never even seen these things requested. So now when he started requesting it, because of who he was, he had access. But then he had a 30-minute stop. Police officers had 30 minutes of body cam. They, he paid for 30 minutes of body cam. The video he got, the body cam he received, 
The body cam that was delivered by police was not on a redacted with no audio. It was only 18 seconds. 18 seconds of a 30-minute encounter with no audio. But then I'm the problem because I can see it. I'm the problem because I know that's, I understand 76% don't come from police. I know they're not turning it over. Guess what? Andrew Brown Jr. knows they're not turning it over. And then what did they see? They saw 18 seconds and an execution, and then they got upset that there was an 18-second execution. And then they do things like distract you about the video. Oh, the video, the video, the video, the video, the video, and they forget to tell you, yeah, we ain't finding drugs either. Because I always tell people, not only look at what's there, look for what's not there. They start the conversation with, a, with drugs. Breonna Taylor, they start a conversation with drugs. Andrew Brown Jr., they start a conversation with drugs. Toya, they start the conversation with drugs. It ends in murder. But then they distract you by talking about the video that they're not turning over. But then you're wondering why people are frowning at you. Why people are flipping you off. Why people are not saluting you. Because some officers make bad decisions, but it is what it is. They took an oath to serve and protect. The only thing they're doing is serving and executing. But we're supposed to be happy with that. Facebook, Instagram, and many other social media platforms has gone to reverting to saving to a person's cloud account after they record a video because police were deleting videos and taking them that was happening during their arrest. Baltimore literally just had, I believe it was 80 officers that were dismissed because they had found at one point or another they had deleted video off of people's cell phone. There are many times people don't get their cell phones back or there are times where the cell phones that they get back are broken and inoperative. Or they've been completely locked. Why? Because the police officers keep messing with it until they lock it. But we're supposed to be happy with that. We're supposed to smile at you. We're not supposed to flip you off. We're not supposed to do any of that other stuff. Even though you admitted that every day there's something negative being betrayed by law enforcement. Why aren't you giving us something good? Why aren't you giving us something to praise that not look at them negative? Because here's the tea, I'm going to give you something else. Most of us never realized that during the Amber Geiger trial, all the videos, every last video that we watched in the Amber Geiger trial did not come from police. I'm going to say that one more time. Every video that was watched in the Amber Geiger trial did not come from police. Yet she's getting hugs in the courtroom. God bless you. And like I went back to, let me, let, let me go back to the blue flu. From May 20th of 2020. The Atlanta co college students, Morehouse, Spellman, Messiah had his arm broken. Had his windows broken. He was tased multiple times because the, record, the recording of these cops that were making a bad decision. Can't call them good because they were making bad decisions. And here's the, here's the great part about it. You ready? And the good cops stopped working right along with those bad cops showing solidarity, not differentiation. Whoops. Whoops. You speak about not all cops are bad, but during the blue flu, you know what? I'm going to give you a Jay-Z line because, you know, I love to quote this shit. Jay-Z said, don't argue with a fool from a distance because at a distance, nobody can tell which is which. When you're taking a side with horrible cops, it looks like you're taking the side of horrible cops. This was last year. It wasn't a long time ago. This was last year. 
Oh, it ain't even been quite a year. We got a couple more days before it ha- hits a year. This was last year. And you're wondering where this came from. They broke the arm of children, literally. Because again, if Ezekiel Elliott can be in the NFL and the antics he's pulling, they refer to him, oh, he's just a kid. Guess what a 19 and 20-year-old are? Children. Because they're literally still in school. So when you're showing solidarity with horrible cops during the blue flu, you can't be good because you're standing with the bad. You're showing unity, not differentiation. Because here's the the thing, because people always tell me, you have to understand. You got to understand. Okay, here's the thing. I want, you, I want you to close your eyes again. Ready? You have to do something to become a police officer. You got to apply. Right? In the middle of that, you have to make a decision to become a police officer. Right? You have to go through something. You have to be trained to become a police officer. So there are steps to becoming a police officer. Guess what happened to the people that they encounter? You know, the ones that make up the government, the ones who they're serving. They just have to be born. No thought. No training. No decisions. Just birth. So what am I supposed to understand? The choice you made, the decisions you made, the training you received. What is it you want me to understand? Your your adaptation of a desecrated American flag? Your adaptation of gang symbolism with the blue line and no snitching? What is it that you want me to understand? That's my question. Because when you say not all cops are bad, I say standing at a distance, I can't tell which is which because you're standing next to them. And with that being said, I think, feel, and believe Officer Kevin Dingle is a good cop. I believe he's a good husband. And I think he's an all-around, well-intended guy. I do. I absolutely do. But I also understand this. I recommend Officer Kevin Dingle stop giving a fuck for people who are literally passers-by in your life. Because those not alls are the reason you don't know if you're going home every night. Not alls are the reason people are frowning at you. Those not alls are the more reasons people are not saluting you. Those not all are the reason people are flipping you off. And change begins within. You have a high ranking as a police official. You have a viral TikTok video. You are now going on to major news channels and stations and platforms. You now have an opportunity to see what the problem is. What are you going to do to change it? Other than shouting, you have two graves dug. Other than celebrating an arrest. Other than yelling out, I'm 